Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. In this episode, you're going to learn how to add caching functionality to your Spring REST controllers with the help of eTags. And that means whenever a client sends you a GET request, the server can simply tell the client, I don't have any new data, I'm not going to send you anything back. Keep the data you have at the moment and work on it. Let's find out how that works. Back in the Spring Boot demo project, simply go and run the Spring Boot demo application again. And while it boots up, you by now should know the drill, open up the REST client, then simply create a new customer, hand Zolo with a post request, and then get the customer again. And as you can see in the response, you get plain XML back, hand Zolo, and when you look at the response headers, it's simply an HTTP 200, okay, and the content type is application XML. So where does the caching come in? Imagine you do another get now, and in fact, the customers haven't changed, so they're still only hand Zolo in the response body. And it would be nice if the server could tell you, well, nothing has changed, I'm not returning you any data, just keep the data you currently have and work on that. And to do just that, there's only one thing you need for now. So create a new bean inside one of your uh, Spring configurations. And it's going to be a filter. Make sure you choose the right one. So it's Java X servlet filter. And then call the filter shallow etag filter. Right? And then you simply return new shallow etag filter. And as you can see, it comes with the Spring web dependency. Good, now you'll have to restart the application for Spring to pick up the filter. So let's do that. Then go to the REST client again. And again, create a customer and get the customer again. Right? So the response hasn't changed, but now let's have a look at the response headers. And looking at the response headers, you see there's a new header. It's an e tag, an entity tag value and it looks like an MD5 hash. And in fact, what the shallow etag header filter does is, it has a look at the response, so at your XML that you can see here, and simply runs an MD5 digest over that response and puts it into the response headers. And now in turn, the client can take that etag, so just copy to your clipboard, go to the request tab, and now add another request header, and it's the if none match header. And put in the e tag with the quotes in here. And what that basically means is please, server, return me any new data or any new customer you have, except if the current customer list you have results in that MD5 hash. Let's try it out. Let's see what happens when you run the request now. And this time you get an empty response body and an HTTP 304 status code, which means not modified. So the server had a look at the etag value that the client sent in. Then it just got the customer list, computed the same etag value and said, well, I don't have any new data, so I'm not going to send you anything back. Now, you might have noticed that this, in fact, saves some bandwidth because here you're just returning a 304, maybe some response time. But what doesn't happen is that it saves compute cycles on the server side because the server still has to, in the case of get customer, call the customer service. The customer service in turn queries the database with a SQL query. So there's a whole lot of computation going on. And imagine you'd have some more complex computation. So you'd have to get customer data from different data sources. Then the server would still pull in all the data to be able to compute the e-tag for you. So as an exercise for you, I want you to have, if you want to, you can have a look at the source code of the shallow etag header filter, but I want you to create your own filter, which doesn't have to work for every controller method. But I want you to think about how you could do the customer controller get customer caching more efficiently. And that could mean maybe you have a local map here with the custom ID. I'll just write custom ID here and the e-tag, so you don't have to hit the database anymore, but just check with that map or with your local cache. But in any case, there's no right or wrong. Just send me your questions or suggestions or your solution to my email, and I'll have a look at them. 
congratulations, you now know how to work with e-tags and how to add caching to your REST controllers. And up next is finally authentication, and you'll learn how to secure your REST controllers so that not any obscure person can simply call your REST controllers. Let's get right after it.